the Jewish Channel's Week in Review. Remembering Mumbai one year later, debating Catholic-Jewish relations under Pope Benedict, an Israeli supermodel leaps off the pages of Sports Illustrated to help out in the Jewish community, rewarding Jewish educators, and more of the Jewish news that's changing your world in this webcast version of the Week in Review. Hello, and welcome to the Jewish Channel's Week in Review. I'm Stephen I. Weiss. The first anniversary of the terrorist attacks in Mumbai that left 173 people dead is next week. The attack is particularly remembered in the Jewish community for the slaying of a Chabad Lubavitch couple and their guests in a Chabad house in the Indian city. Commemorations of the attack and memorial services for those killed in the attacks are taking place throughout the globe, including at the annual conference of thousands of Chabad emissaries or shluchim held last weekend in New York. In unrelated news, Israel has arrested an alleged Jewish terrorist whom the government claims has killed two Palestinians while hoping to kill more. The 37-year-old man is Jack Yaakov Titel, formerly of Florida, and his indictment alleges multiple bombing and poisoning plots against Palestinians, as well as acts of violence against other minorities, including gays and Messianic Jews. Titel is reported to have said at the court prior to the reading of his indictment, It was a pleasure and honor to serve my God. God is proud of what I have done. I have no regrets. In a very different type of arrest in Israel, a woman was arrested at the Western Wall for wearing a prayer shawl and carrying a Torah. The woman was participating in a prayer service of Women of the Wall, a group that holds women-led services in a small, separate area near the Western Wall, since laws regarding what may be done at the Western Wall follow Orthodox Jewish doctrine. The woman is said to have been walking somewhat apart from the legislated boundaries for Women of the Wall, and that religious overseer saw her movement into the main prayer area while holding a prayer shawl and holding a Torah scroll as an act of religious provocation. It's not clear what type of sentence may be applied to her. And while some women in Israel are having a hard time getting their message out, one Israeli supermodel is spreading a message of increased Jewish activity here in the United States. Margie Rahut reports. It was an exciting night for fashion as three of Israel's top fashion designers showcased their lines in a swanky Manhattan club setting. Enhance Your Fashion, Engage Your Passion was hosted by Israeli Sports Illustrated swimsuit model Esti Ginsberg, who was thrilled to be a part of the event since she's always had a particular fondness for Israeli fashion. I love Israeli fashion. Every time I'm away for a long time, I love always going and checking out all the new Israeli designers. They're so talented. and so unique and I think they got inspired by um, the weather and the, just the entire vibe of Israel. It, it, it makes it different without even trying. But the organizers wanted to do more than simply have attendees swoon over clothes. We want to get people more engaged, people more involved in everyday Israeli uh, charities or Jewish life. To learn more about how the catwalk and nonprofit organizations can be integrated for a sexy and exciting evening, see the full broadcast version of the Week in Review. Thank you, Margie. Catholic Jewish relations under Pope Benedict XVI haven't been very smooth. Even the Pope's trip to Israel in 2009 raised new problems with the Jewish community at the very same time as the trip was supposed to encourage better Jewish Catholic relations. In a recent high-profile event, two major leaders of those respective faiths, New York Archbishop Timothy Dolan and Jewish Theological Seminary Chancellor Arnold Eisen, shared a stage to discuss the current state of dialogue among Jews and Catholics, and TJC's Christian Neiden was there. For leadership positions usually filled for decades, both the current Chancellor of the Jewish Theological Seminary, Arnold Eisen, and the Archbishop of New York, Timothy Dolan, are relative newcomers. At Fordham University this month, the two shared their ideas for the future of Catholic-Jewish relations. Relations between the Catholic Church and the Jewish people are, to use appropriately a biblical metaphor, like a house built on solid ground. It can endure, experience tells us. This is because the builders of this house have been master architects, people like Pope John XXIII, Cardinal Augustine Bea, Abraham Joshua Heschel, but what about the controversies that have come up since the beginning of the papacy of Benedict XVI? For these Jewish and Catholic leaders' thoughts, see the full broadcast version of the Week in Review. Thank you, Christian. When it comes to highlighting the good work of educators, many feel that all teachers deserve more praise than they receive. In the Jewish world, for the first time, dozens of Jewish educators were awarded for their service at a national conference. Rebecca Honig Friedman has that story. While Jewish organizational leaders convened at the Jewish Federations of North America's General Assembly last week to hear from world leaders and network with each other, Jewish educators from across North America came for their very own award ceremonies. 
People were like screaming and I felt like I had won an Academy Award. I'm so excited. It's, very, it's a great honor for me. It's nice to be here with other excellent Jewish educators and to, to celebrate what we do. It feels good. To hear more from these excellent educators and what they're doing to improve Jewish education, see the full broadcast version of the Week in Review. Thank you, Rebecca. Finally, you've probably heard of Quentin Tarantino's movie, Inglorious Bastards, about Jewish revenge against the Nazis. But there's a documentary airing now, Killing Kastner, that tells a different story. Margie Rauhut stopped by to find out what it is. Like Schindler, he had a list. But instead of going down in history as a hero, he was vilified and assassinated in Israel. A new documentary film, Killing Katzner, premiering in New York City, is scheduled to be released nationally in the months to come. Well, Killing Katzner is about the Jew who negotiated with Eichmann, which is an amazing story that he negotiated, a Jew negotiated with a Nazi for the last million Jews of Europe. And it's no surprise that this shocking story is being met with real interest at the box office. I had not known of Katzner until I saw the review in the paper, and I'm so glad I went to see the film, and I'm going to tell everybody else to go see it. But not everyone agrees that Kastner was a hero. Whoever killed him, they should not have been released seven years later. They should have been given a victory parade. When you deal with the devil, can you really come out unscathed? The documentary presents new historical evidence that suggests Kastner was a hero. But this Holocaust survivor, like others who remember his trial, is still skeptical of his innocence. I already told you, Kastner was responsible in dealing with Kurt Becher, who was a member of Section 4 of the Gestapo, which was Eichmann and his cohorts. He but no matter where your opinions lie, thanks to the new documentary, Killing Kastner, the debate, as heated as it might be, is at least now being had. The film is currently playing at Cinema Village in Manhattan and is scheduling dates for other theaters around the country. Reporting for the Jewish Channel, I'm Mar Margie Rauhut. Thank you, Margie. That's all for this week. For more news and analysis from the Jewish Channel during the week, please check out our blog at newsdesk.tjctv.com. For the full broadcast version of the Week in Review, including additional stories, interviews, and features, please stop by the Jewish Channel on cable. From all of us here at the Jewish Channel, be well. The Jewish Channel is available on cable. IO Optimum Cable Channel 291, Time Warner Cable Channel 528, RCN Channel 268, Verizon Fios Channel 900, and Cox Cable Channel 1. For more information, visit tjctv.com.